Hello everyone, welcome back to another Doctor Who collection update showing you all the lovely bits of Doctor Who merchandise I've picked up from when my last collection update ended to the end of December. So this is the Christmas collection update, so I hope that you all had a wonderful Christmas full of lovely Doctor Who merchandise. So this collection update, we've got quite a bit of Doctor Who merch to show. We've got magazines, vinyls, books, Blu-rays, figures, big finish. So we've practically got everything covered in terms of the Doctor Who merch that I collect. So without further ado, let's begin this collection update. Kicking off this collection update, I thought we need to kick off this December collection update with a bang. You know, it's the last one of the year, so we really need to do something quite special to open this one up. And I think I've got the perfect item for it. It is the Sonic Spork. Yes, this fantastic bit of Doctor Who merch. I'm lying, it's, it's Doctor Who tat and... It's taken me, I've survived this long without it, and we, we finally have this premium Doctor Who item. Now, I love this Sonic Screwdriver, so much so I've got the actual uh, rubber toe replica of it. Um, but yeah, now I have the definitive version of this Sonic, the Spork version. Um, so I can fight Robin Hood and eat food at the same time. I think I am winning, so yes. Thank you Mel's mom for getting me this Sonic Spork. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's a sonic screwdriver that has a spork attachment. Mm, yes, um, and it still doesn't do wood. Our next Doctor item is a fashion accessory, which is da -da 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 -da, the Seventh Doctor umbrella, yes, by Lavazzi. Finally caved, finally picked it up, and I'm very happy that I have, because it's a really nice little display piece, and of course you can use it as an action umbrella. Um, but not sure that you'd want to because you know we're stock two fans we like to keep things in mint condition or you know look after our things really but I think that it's a nice little way of going hey I'm a dog two fan uh, without having hey I'm a dog two fan on a t-shirt uh, but yeah it's a very nice thing I think they've updated it from the original release to change the color red uh, to make it more screen accurate as it was on screen in terms of the coloring but I think that's the only real change to it. Um, but yeah, it's a very nice piece. Um, and I'm very happy to add the seventh Doctor umbrella to my Doctor Who collection. Our next item is some artwork. It was a Secret Santa present. And it was this of all the Doctors, which I really do love. I think that it's just really cool, especially because it's a Secret Santa present, which, you know, you don't really expect to get Doctor Who goodies. And this is a lovely print of all of the doctors so there we go we've got five to eight there um very nice artwork and of course we do have the new doctors there um obviously missing shooty and david tennant again um we could say david tennant twice over really because of the meta crisis doctor but yeah really lovely uh print there of all the doctors i really do love it so i'm definitely going to get that framed and hang it up on the wall because it's some lovely bit of artwork so yeah love it moving on to magazines so we've got doctor Who magazine there with the 14th doctor's debut cover or is it the 10th doctor um yeah started the first 14th doctor story liberation of the daleks which continues in the next issue um which is look shaping up to be quite a nice comic really um and then one thing what i didn't really intend on buying but i saw in the shop and it was the last one there and I was kind of like, you know what, go on then. Because um, I've enjoyed the other two what I've got so far. And that is the Doctor Who Chronicles 1967. I am very tempted to pick up the ones I'm missing. I said I wouldn't, but these are a really nice uh, magazine. Uh, sort of giving the history of a certain year in Doctor Who. Giving a breakdown of the stories, the merch. Uh, which is very appealing for me. Because uh, I like that side of stuff. Um, a bit of a breakdown on Deborah Watling, um, location work, a bit about the sort of Daleks or spin-off, what never came to be. Um, so yeah, really nice magazine. Now I did pick up a non Doctor Who related magazine, which technically does have a Doctor Who tie-in, um, which was the SFX magazine, which came with some lovely Doctor Who art prints there of season eight and of course season two. But one of the exciting things about said magazine was this poster. Um, now you might be wondering, well, it, you get posters with most magazines, but I think because of what it is, it's rather exciting. 
it is a poster for a big finish story kaleidoscope which is a glorious cover and it makes for a wonderful poster so yeah that's the main reason i picked up that magazine it's got some nice doctor who feature active in it um but you know for doctor who freebies it's rather nice to have that lovely big finish poster it does have one for the uh illustrated dalek thing but hey i'm a third doctor fan so that's the way that poster's going Following on from magazines, we have a book. Now, last year I got a wonderful sort of coffee table book, which was about the missing adventures and new adventures. And I think that these sort of Doctor Who coffee table books are a great sort of Christmas present because um, you can just flick through um, what after sort of Christmas day after you've had your big Christmas dinner. Um, this year we've got a lovely coffee table Doctor Who book, which is Doctor Who and the Daleks: The Official Story of the Films, covering the two. Dalek films. This is a lovely book. You've got this lovely embossed uh, logo there. It's all very nice. Even down on the spine, it's embossed, as you can see. Um, this is the signed FP version um, by the author John Walsh. If I can get the page, can we get the page? Um, there we go. You can see uh, it's signed there. But yeah, this is a lovely book documenting the Peter Cushing Dalek films from like the sort of all the behind the scenes things so the concept to the release the merchandise um, it is just this lovely um, book which I highly recommend it covers all sort of the cast and crew um, sort of the model work talks about the third film what was never happened um, but yeah it is this really lovely um, big chunky uh, coffee table book which if you're a fan of the Peter Cushing films then you definitely need it and I think the Peter Cushing films really encapsulate sort of a nice Christmassy feel so yeah very nice or Christmas present this is. The next bit of Doctor Who merch I'm going to show you is DVDs and Blu-rays. Now we've got quite a few DVDs and Blu-rays to show. I've thrown in a few little wildcard uh, releases because they're technically not Doctor Who related but they do have a Doctor Who connection. Um, so yeah it's my collection update. I'm going to throw these in because I want to talk about them as well but the first one is a Doctor Who related. Uh, sort of product. It is the Sarah Jane Adventures A Complete Collection Series 1 to 5. Now these have recently been added on to BBC iPlayer but I know that some have been edited and certain episodes aren't there and I only had Series 1 on DVD um, so I thought you know what for Christmas it's nice to get a box set. What better way to have a bit of nostalgia and watch the Sarah Jane Adventures because it was a, something I didn't really one as a kid because they were always on the CBBC channel, they were always on, whether it be on half term, they were just constantly on, um, so I didn't really feel the need to get it, but now it's important to support physical media and have, you know, I think the BBC iPlayer thing proves that, you know, if you want something and you love it, buy it on physical because, you know, you have it in its truest form then, really, um, and if it disappears, you have it forever. Um, so yeah, it's great to finally have the Sarah Jane Adventures because you know, it's a great series from memory and I can't wait to feel like a, a kid, <laughs> you know? It's a lovely thing and you know, everybody loves Sarah Jane. So I'm gonna move on to the wild card Blu-rays now. Uh, so we have one of the best multi-doctor stories that never happened. It's with Nail and I, um, it stars Paul McGann and Richard E. Grant. It's one of my favorite films. It's such a clever, funny film. Um, it technically includes three Doctors because you've got Richard Griffiths who would have taken over from Sylvester McCoy. Um, so yeah, it's a great sort of, it's a great imagining going, well, these are the Doctors with their memories wiped and they have to live on Earth. Um, but yeah, it's a real fun film. And yeah, it's a great film. I recommend it um, if you've not seen it. It's a really clever way if you want to know how sort of uh, screenwriting works because you never know the name of Paul McGann's character, he's just I and it's just brilliant because you never question it throughout watching it, it's tremendous. Um, next up we have a Blu-ray um, of good old Wurzel Gummidge, now this is the complete restored edition series 1 to 4 um, and this is an absolute brilliant thing, it's very much like a Doc 2 collection set but for Wurzel Gummidge, this is the definitive Wurzel Gummidge because they found the original film negatives and this is the best Wurzel Gummidge has ever looked. If you've owned the VHS's or DVD's then you know that Wurzel can be a, bit, a little bit ropey but this, my goodness, it's like it was filmed yesterday. It's tremendous 
um, the restoration work. We've got wonderful um, extras, like uh, 10 hours of extra content. So it definitely has a lot of um, love put into this, you know, whether it be sort of the lost um, stories from series two with John Pertwee reading the scripts, the audiobook of that. So that's very cool. Um, yeah, it just feels like a, a Doc 2 collection set for words or gummage. It has that type of feel to it, really, a lot of love and attention has been put into it. So yeah, those are the little wildcard Blu-rays I just thought I want to talk about because they deserve some love. And, you know, it's Wurzel Gummidge, it's John Pertwee. This is channel is dedicated to John Pertwee, so it feels only right to put that in there. Um, the next Blu-ray I got because of a certain steelbook release, um, Revolution of the Daleks. Um, yeah, not much to say about it. I got it because of the next Blu-ray release. I've not seen this since it aired. Um, so it'll be interesting to see um, what I think of the story again. I know this story hasn't aged that particularly well. Um, but yeah, we have Revolution of the Daleks now, so we have all the 13th Doctor era on Blu-ray. So the main reason I picked up Revolution of the Daleks was because of this, the specials steelbook, which I think Revolution of the Daleks should have been on, to be honest. Um, but yeah, this contains either the Daleks, Legend of the Sea Devils and Power of the Doctor. It's a beautiful still book, lovely um, artwork of their of the 13th Doctor, one of my favourite still book um, artworks. So I'm sure I'll talk more in depth about the still book when I get round to it in the still book history. But the main Doctor Who Blu-ray for December was season two. Look at it, um, a magical box set. Um, definitely a perfect time to be sitting down and watching it. Um, I've done all the new special features bar the David Whittaker one. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty decent set. I will say, maybe because this is such a chunky set, this, some discs feel really sparse. Like the Space Museum, it feels like there's barely anything on it. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting one. It's interesting to see how um, the collection team are tackling um, these black and white seasons. And, you know, season two makes a perfect sense. And I think the restoration work is brilliant. I think that they've done a magical job, especially on sort of the film sequences on Dalek Invasion of Earth. Um, but yeah, we've got the web planet in HD, and I think that that's, that's all we really need to say, and that's all we really need <laughs> now. Um, but yeah, glorious set, very chunky set as you can see. Um, but yeah, it's an absolute monster of a thing which I'm still working my way through, and it's just the perfect time to be watching the first Doctor by the Christmas tree and you just get the magic of 60s Doctor Who, because 60s Who is just sheer magic. Figures now, so our first figure related item is the History of the Dalek Set 9, Planet of the Dalek Set 2. Now I have this set already, um, but because I'm a third Doctor fan, and because of how special this set is, um, getting another clear Dalek and having this set mint and boxed, it's you know worth getting. Um, because I've accidentally got all of the third Doctor History of a Dalek set in packaging. Um, this is surely by accident because I bought a second Dare of the Dalek set last year because I wanted another Dare of the Dalek drone Dalek. Um, and I never unboxed it, so I've just sort of kept it in its box. I'm like, it looks pretty, it's cool. And then they released the Planet of a Dalek set with two of the gunmetal grey drone Daleks of the Mutant Reveal. And it's like the closest thing we have to a mutant reveal Dalek in the classic line. Um, so I bought another one of those and I thought, well, because these are like the last two planet, last two third Doctor Dalek sets, I should get complete the set really. So I picked up another planet set just to keep in box. And because, you know, it's it's a third Doctor, he's my favourite Doctor. So I thought, you know what, I might as well complete the third Doctor uh, Dalek sets mint in box. So yeah, very nice to have that. I do have the death set, but it's not quite... Um, arrived yet because Mel's got it at the minute because you know Mel's mom got it me so yeah thanks Mel's mom uh, but yeah we've got the Planet of a Dalek set so the next figures are the B&M Winter Wave yes containing quite a lot of Daleks we have the first Doctor and TARDIS the David Bradley version the 13th Doctor set which there are two variants one with the neutral weeping angel and one with the screaming weeping angel which is behind i still need to review that set and once that review is done i will do my top 10 figures for 2022 so we've got a history of the dalek set for genesis of the daleks and destiny of the daleks the creation of the dalek set and the ninth doctor set um yeah really brilliant wave much better than the summer wave i think that this wave offers a lot more 
that gives people a chance to get a classic Davros and some real sort of cool play features with the Dalek or features within that. Um, and I think the 13th Doctor set actually is one of the standouts because I think the paint taps on the Jody figure are incredible. Probably the best paint taps on a 13th Doctor figure so far and I really like this sort of muted uh, costume really and I love the David Bradley TARDIS set because you know it's I love a TARDIS figure set um, oh nearly knocked him there that would have been a disaster but yeah the ninth Doctor set is all right I think but yeah it's okay it's an all right set um, it's nice to have a holographic ninth Doctor finding the line um, but yeah I think the Destiny of a Dalek set is a real surprise I really love it I may I have a huge soft spot on Destiny of a Daleks anyway but yeah it's great to find you have two more drone Daleks from that story. So yeah, I really like this wave. I think but it's a real strong wave of figures. I think the figure packs are a lot stronger compared to the summer wave. Um, but yeah, I think the Ninth Doctor one possibly is the weakest one of that wave. Um, but yeah, great wave overall in terms of Doctor figures. So yeah, once I've reviewed the 13th Doctor set, I will do my top 10 figures for 2022. Big finish time, so I thought I'd kickstart the big finish section with a Christmas big finish because you know this is the December update. We have the Empire Man. Now it's become tradition for Torture to do a Christmas release in December. Um, we've had the Crown and we've had the Grey Mare, and now this is the Empire Man by Jonathan Barnes. This has a nice sort of MR James feel to it, uh, with three characters sort of recounting their experiences of the supernatural and they all sort of link and tie into the same story overall it's a really nice sort of christmas uh ghost story listen so yeah really enjoyed uh that one i mean luke will be doing a torchwood um big finish fans talking about that and a few other torchwood releases continuing the spin-off theme we have Unit Brave New World Visitants. Um, I've not listened to this. This is a second set featuring Bambera. Um, I really enjoyed the first Bambera set and I think that this is very much on the same lines from reviews. So yeah, it's gonna be another great set. So I can't wait to listen to that one eventually. And then we have a one of my favorite ranges of Big Finish, which is Escape from Reality. The War Master enters the land of fiction what a tremendous cover now i've only listened to the first story of this one i really enjoyed sort of the take on greek mythology and the war master trying to beat it um, and use it to its advantage which was great um but yeah we've got a sherlock holmes one there with richard earl as dr watson and of course the dorian gray one so yeah it'd be great to sort of see those sort of worlds of uh big finish sort of combined with the War Master. So yeah, I'm looking forward to listening to that because the War Master range is one of Big Finish's finest ranges. Now, Big Finish had a sale on Livchenka and I thought I'd dive into this spin-off. Now I have the first box set and I have the second set um, on order, but it hasn't arrived yet. Um, but we do have the Robots, volume three and volume four now, Luke, the person I do the streams with and has done the Regeneration Advent Calendar with, um, praised this series as sort of a nice little underrated range. I love Robot to Death and it'd be interesting to see how Caldor City's expanded on within these. Um, but yeah, it, apparently it's a great sort of set series for Tucson Pool. Um, but yeah, very nice to have the sort of first series of the robots completed. Um, hopefully, once I've listened to it, I'll do a video covering the range just to give it a bit more love out there because I, I think that it is going to be a nice little surprising listen, really. So, yeah, look forward to giving those a go um, at some point in the future. We have the last 7th Doctor release um, for the relaunch of 2022, which was Sullivan and Cross AWOL um, featuring um, London Orbital and Scream of the Daleks. Now, I really like this set. I think this set should have come out in October instead of November, personally. Um, but yeah, this the Dalek story is a nice little Halloween listen. Um, but yeah, this is a nice one featuring Harry and Naomi, um, which are a great sort of TARDIS team. Um, McCoy is brilliant in it, especially in the Dalek story. He really sort of sells the fear factor of the Daleks within it. London Orbital is a nice sort of Doctor Who um, meets or Lord of the Rings or with sort of a Game of Thrones sort of political um, thriller in, within there which is great 
Um, yeah, really nice sort of set. Um, I like the sort of inclusion of folklore in both stories, and I think, but yeah, one of my favourite releases of the year. So the next few big finishes, we have the Ninth Doctor Adventures Hidden Depths. Um, as you can see, we're quite heavy <laughs> into the live releases there. So yeah, good good time for Nicola Walker in this collection update. Um, yeah, Ninth Doctor and the Sea Devils, which was okay. It was okay. It was a nice sort of nice sort of twist on a, a sea devil story very much reminded me of the Bernie Summerfield Poison Seas um, story and then we have uh, Lay, Lay Down Your Arms which was a nice nice fun story and Flat Pack was probably the standout of the set um, yeah I thought there would have been more of a more of a deal between the Ninth Doctor um, and sort of Liv and Tanya but it's just oh hello what are you doing here <laughs> that's kind of the sort of dealing of that so yeah it's kind of yeah brushes it over i think the ninth doctor is a great fit for living tanya because you know stranded um was a nice sort of kitchen sink domestic series the ninth doctor is very much a kid kitchen sink domestic doctor really isn't he um so yeah our next couple of big finish releases the last two big finish releases are the eighth doctor releases which is what lies inside and connections there we go you can see how they are connected it's slightly taller because this one's still in its cellophane uh, but yeah what do I think of the 8th Doctor relaunch releases I have to say McGann had a really good year at Big Finish I think that he's probably the Doctor what's done the 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 best out of the relaunch out of the Doctors that have two releases this year um, I'm hoping to do a review on both of these box sets Paradox of the Daleks is probably my favorite of the of the set of stories Really nice, clever story, some nice, funny Dalek dialogue, and it's a story that I think will really benefit multiple re listens because it's just a real clever story uh, by John Dorney, as you would expect. And then you have the the Dalby spook, which is which is fun. It's a nice one. Um, and then you have uh, I think Here Lies Drax, which is a tremendous um, fun romp. Very much a nice continuation from the. Trouble with Drax, um, that fourth Doctor adventure. So yeah, really nice one that is. And then we have Love Vampires, which is a nice sort of twist on Doctor Who and Vampires, which I adore. And then we have Albie's Angel, which is a great emotional um, story and a great story for Helen. Um, and it was based off um, one of sto a, a story what Trevor Baxter told um, in the green room when they were recording Jake on Life. So yeah, it's a nice sort of way of honouring. Um, Trevor Baxter's legacy by you know telling one of his stories and turning into a Doctor Who adventure really. So there we go that is the December collection update for 2022 the last collection update of the year and yeah quite a nice selection of Doctor Who merchandise pretty much everything vinyl DVD blu-ray big finish figures Doctor Who novelty items you name it, this collection update pretty much got it all really. Um, so yeah, if you've enjoyed this collection update, please do like and subscribe. Um, if you're new around here, um, it really does help the channel out. There's plenty of Doctor Who related content coming up in the near future, like a regeneration tier list where we tier list all the regeneration stories from the 10th planet to the power of the Doctor. And of course, there will be my top 10 figures for 2022 and my top 10 big finish releases for 2022 as well. So yeah, a lot of highlights looking back at the year. And yeah, that's all to come in the future. But for now, all I have left to say is goodbye. Bye.